another big thing is when you're buying a house the stamp duty and the solicitor's fees a mm. lot of people nearly half forget that so when you're looking at it and, and, and the bank and you go right that house over there is is three hundred thousand and you're going right you have to add on three grand you know for the stamp duty so you're looking at three hundred and three thousand let's mm -hmm. just call it look three grand for for simple maths for a solicitor for all their fees that, that are involved there's the like three hundred and six thousand that somebody wasn't factoring in you know you're getting two hundred and seventy thousand of you know ninety percent and you're like mm -hmm. right there's there's thirteen thirty six thousand there people go but mm -hmm. i only saved 30. yeah and you're just gonna go yeah you're forgetting that the bank wants to see that you have the solicitor fees and and the stamp duty money there mm -hmm. as well Okay, yeah. hello everyone. Welcome to episode 19 of the Paradigm Shift, where we talk about how a moment in time can make or break a person. And today I'm joined with Barry Whelan. Um, he works with Covermore Financial. Um, so, Barry, how are you doing? Good, good, good. Obviously not in the same surroundings as you. Um, yeah. You know, unfortunately I'm in the, the spare room, the office, uh, surrounded by dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not unfortunately not on the travels, but uh, all is good. We're we're planning our holiday. Uh, look, I know as I said to you before, um, when when we first met, you were like, "Oh, I'm going, I'm going away," and I was kind of going, yeah. "I came home and I had the conversation with herself." I was like, "I know we're going holidays, but we need to do two holidays a year." Yeah. And it's it, funny. It'll, uh, look, it'll come up later on. As you kind of say, look briefly from chatting, what changes you? And and my kind of goals they change like daily and weekly. Um, yeah. in a in a good way. Um as someone said in the office, you should take a day off. And I went, Do you know what? I should take a day off. Yeah. And you kind of work really hard in a day or a week or a month to take a week off or, or time yeah. off or the way I said we're going on, on two holidays, potentially looking at a little break in for the third. And, and kind of some of that oh. stem from chatting to yourself, you know. Um yeah. just kind of going, Yeah, we 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 should be traveling more. Look. You can put down the fancy kitchens and, and marble countertops and, and, and you're, you're forever going to be doing stuff with a house. We went to, oh, yeah. let's, let's put some money into holidays. Let, let's, mm -hmm. let's create those memories. Let's do those nice things. Exactly. Exactly. Definitely. It's, it's, and it's, it's well worth it. It's well worth it. I know this is like the biggest change that we've done and I, I wouldn't regret this at all. It's been a, it's been very fruitful. I stayed with, I just finished staying with a family. Uh, we did like a homestay. We lived on their farm for a couple of days. Yeah, yeah. His kids and everything. Yeah, it was very, very interesting how their way of life was, and it was like Cambodian New Year. So mm. the locals are all lovely, so nice, asking us to go for drinks with them. You know, the food is, food's great. Yeah, uh, their house is great. His kids are great. You know, so playful. It's just, it's completely different to how. You know, you, we raise our kids back at home. You know, like his yeah, kids don't yeah, have yeah. any toys. You know, they don't even have any toys, but they don't get bored either because they just run around the yard all day. You know, they're they're busy like that. Like they're, yeah. they're kept busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kept busy outside all day. Like they don't even want to go inside. There's nothing inside. You know, it's it's, <laughs> yeah. it's completely different from so home. Everyone at home. Playstations and all the stuff and just get the yeah. here at home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kids at home wouldn't know what to do. You know? Yeah, it's very true. Wouldn't know what to do. But anyway, we'll hop right into it. So the first yeah. thing that um, I want to talk about is, because the podcast is called The Paradigm Shift, tell us about a paradigm shift in your life and how that brought you to where you are today. Wow, it's been a lot. Um, What's the one that, that has? has I, like, I like to say they, they change weekly. And, like different goals for me change. Um, and I don't mean just like targets and work, but just... I might decide I want to change the car. I want to decide I want to go on holidays and just kind of get different focuses. But um, it's going to sound really cheesy. But um, yeah. when when I met my partner, Ellie, that was the biggest change for me. Really? The last number of years. Yeah, yeah. Biggest. That was the biggest change. Um, stop smoking, which is obviously a good yeah. thing. Um, I'm very highly strung. Like, I mean, I'm very, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an intense person. I'm... Very highly strung. I'm not as bad now, like 
uh, I don't mean something I'd be awful negative about myself, but I just, oh, if it, something comes in, like, I need to get it done, and everything is like, you know, it needs to be done now, and there's no waiting, there's no five minutes, so I've definitely, I've definitely calmed down a bit. I'd, I'd say, like, I was a stroke waiting to happen, but yeah. um, there's there's kind of two things as well that always stuck with me. Apart from herself, I said I'd give her a plug, you know, um, but it was yeah. definitely one of the bigger changes in, in my life, and I, I'd, I'd be a happier person in general. But there's two yeah. people go, oh, watch videos and, and, and do these things. And it's it's not really for me, but there was two things that really stuck out. And one was this video, and they're, they're quite well known, but one was um, like an American general or something. He was in the army. And he was mm. kind of going, his story about, you want to make a change in the world. Start by making your bed. You know, so every day. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. So I, yeah. I, I kind of make the bed every day. And yeah. I got into this. By, by doing small little goals or achievements, um, it paves the way for a positive day. Do you know, mm. like the bed is set, we've achieved that task. Having yeah. walking the dogs in the morning generally puts me in good form. Having a mm. shower then after that. So it's all positive. I try and trick the brain a lot by yeah. associating positive things. So that video, definitely I try and sometimes I watch it a lot um you know every couple of months just to, as a bit of a reset the other one's a really funny one actually is um which i've never seen it is matthew mcconaughey yeah um and i think it was an oscar speech i can't remember and he said who's your hero he's asked who his hero was i, I like him he's so articulate and he just kind of went my hero is me in five years time and that is the ultimate cheesy line or it's kind of like yeah, yeah. it really should be from him like a jerry Maguire show me the money moment but i kind of mm. I looked at different and I kind of going, I like who I am. I'm, I'm confident in myself. I'm happy in myself, but I can always be better. Be a better person. Mm -hmm. Be a better person for the kids. Be a better person for yourself. Be a better person for family, friends, for the dogs, whatever. Just try and be a better version of yourself. Yeah. And there are two things that kind of sometimes you might need to hit the reset button. They're, they're things I use a lot. They're not a, that ultimate... Uh, like, I'd fail to say I've had this one big defining moment that completely changed my life. Yeah. Um, I don't, to a degree, I, ho I don't, I hope I don't, because generally mm -hmm. when you have this big moment, it's, I don't know, it's an illness, it's a recovery yeah. from an addiction, it's, it's, it's something like that. Yeah, and very heavy. I don't want to say that, I say to a degree, but I'm fortunate. I never, I never got into anything like that. I never had that moment. And with an illness, hopefully I don't, you know, I don't come across that. So for me, it's, yeah. it's little things. Um, but yeah, definitely herself was the, the big change, you know, definitely. Uh, it was the most consistent changes and positive changes in the, in around the one thing, you know. Yeah, of course. What's her name? Ellie. Gibberish. Hello, Ellie. Shout out to Ellie. <laughs> She'll never <laughs> see it. <laughs> 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 right that's lovely i think for me in terms of optimizing my day what i uh, started putting into my day was i do something difficult first thing i wake up i do something that i don't want to do because if you do something that i hate the rest of the day just gets easier because if you do something that you hate first something that you really yeah. don't want to do something that you that you just want to push you know you get that done the day could not get worse than that and that's what i've used to trick my own brain to, yeah, to, yeah, to, I've, to I've, snappy I've emotion. Kind of, we we had things before the difficult tasks. So you like your tasks, you've A, B, or C, or one, two, or three, and and you judge them. And I went through a phase of writing them down and tackling some of the hardest ones. And it does. Mm. It, I'm an awful procrastinator. Um, yeah. I am like and I kind of cop with shiny lights. Like I'll be sitting here and go right. I got to get this mortgage yeah. in for Tunji now, and we start assessing the case on an email. I come in, I go. Ooh. And it's just, yeah. like, I just don't want to do all that hard work. I'm just going to push that to the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I battle with that daily. Like, I honestly yeah. battle with procrastination of difficult tasks uh, daily. And I, like, I'd be, I'd be always very honest about it. Um, yeah. I do. So I might, might need to look, go back to what's the hardest thing I got to do today. And yeah. we'll, yeah. we'll tackle that first because, yeah, it does, it does make the life, um, it does make that day go a little bit smoother. Definitely. Different strokes for different folks, though, you know. It's it's different for everyone. That's, Whatever works for you, works something. for you. And I, I always say yeah. this, and I suppose you're kind of getting into a different side, but the, the mental health aspect of things. Um, oh, yeah. 
and I kind of find, look, <clears throat> an act for me, I have to be active. Mm-hmm. And I've everyone's head drove mad here with Hoover and cleaning. Mm-hmm. Um, I can maybe touch of OCD or something. But I have to have an active, I have to be active, I have to be doing stuff all yeah. the time. Um, I just, for me, that's when I'm at my happiest, when I'm, when I'm actually busy and doing mm-hmm. things. If I'm idle, the mind starts going into into overdrive, starts overthinking and overcomplicating things. So I'd say for not that I'm a doctor, but anyone that is suffering from the likes of the, the mental health issues, you know, try set up a few tasks, you know, even little easy ones, try and get a few little things going. I know people obviously suffer all of that. It's just find it hard to actually get up and yeah. get any way motivated. But little things, as I always say, find me someone who didn't feel good after a shower. Yeah, yeah, you know, even, 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 going for, even going for a shower, you know, and I, like that's why the bed thing really the changing yeah. of the sheets for me is such a you know, after a really good day, I like, oh, yeah, cool, a nice fresh bed. After a really shitty day, it's like, oh, yeah, thank god, I'm in bed yeah. now, it's, exactly. it's nice and fresh, and you, you hopefully then try and get a good sleep, then you know, yeah, no, that's it, right? So, we're gonna go straight into it, right? So People might not know who you, you kind are. Of, you kind of did. You kind of started off the hardest one. Uh, yeah, I know. So that's 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 the trick. You know, you do the hardest one, get that one out of the way, and yeah, everything yeah. else just gets I easier. You know? Push that one down a bit. Yeah. So we're going to go into uh, who you are and what do you do. Well, obviously, look, I'm a financial a financial planner. Um, so basically, look simply there, we kind of go around meeting people. Um, discussing the financial plans whether that be a mortgage whether it be life cover what's going on savings plans so um we're often viewed as a salesman you know like your insurance sales uh, look yeah. to a degree yes it is but with, with financial advice in general um there's there's something there that you need to buy or a product that you will need to buy to make a difference in the life. And sometimes, yeah, unfortunately, it is life cover, but I believe in it massively in mm. if you have a family, like a single guy or a guy and a girl going out together, maybe after getting the first house or apartment or whatever, you don't need life cover. Do you know, to a degree, yeah. unless you want to leave something behind, that's different, but yep. you don't need it. But if you have kids, and I'm a big believer in that, and I just believe it's the right thing, but if you have kids and people who are dependent on, on your income, if you do die, what happens then? Mm. You know, and that's why we put life cover in in place to leave behind that that income that that is no longer there. Um, savings plans for the future. You know, I don't know for what. Like, but my savings plans. Everyone goes. You need to go in for five years minimum. Blah blah blah. To a degree, they're kind of right. My savings plans are all about spending, putting it yeah. over here to spend it. And yeah. yeah, I believe in the rainy day fund, but. It's the, the short, medium, and long term goals. You know what what's happening. Um, mm-hmm. putting little bits of money, and I find Revolut is a great thing. You know, I hate to think how many little vaults I have there, like the car fund. You know, you're putting a few quid in for a service, tires, insurance, tax, and it just yeah. makes when when that expense comes around, you mightn't have it all, and it's, it's mm-hmm. not about having it all, but it's definitely trying to reduce that. Um, but I actually got my insurance cost 414 euros today. I was like, woo! But <laughs> having a few little euros aside, you're just not getting hit with that big bill. And obviously, there's yeah. pensions and, and stuff like that. But people kind of go, oh, I can't I can't meet a financial advisor because like, I've, I've nothing or I, I haven't got much money. Um, you can't if some lad is trying to charge you 250 quid. Yeah, it's to help with them, you know, and I, I just really dislike that. Um, mm. It alienates so many people from financial planning. Um, and I'm a big believer in even if I met you and we'd low incomes and you know, we're, we're really tight and, and, and living and, and something's happening. Um, I believe leaving somebody with something like we get paid by insurance companies if we do put a policy in place. But I've yeah. often found so many times that when we've met someone, we might need on business or just given them a small bit of advice, like their cousin or their brother or their uncle or their friend will ring you out like completely out of blue in, in three, four months' time. Yeah. And you go yeah. do business there. So this kind of charging 
this 200 like 250 euros for me or 300 or 200 and i see certain people doing it is for me insane mm. i just find it so much money for um for someone that at the end might be told listen it's too tight yeah to, to mention and i kind of laugh at it again people kind of go oh but i'm charging here because we're, we're telling you what to do with your money Mm -hmm. we're facilitating what to do with your money yeah like we're yeah. recommending there that you're going to put a pension with zurich or aviva or whoever new ireland like some advisors i actually hate financial advisors some advisors go on <laughs> as if they're actually physically managing the money like they, they're yeah. sitting at home moving your investment around we don't yeah. the life company does that yeah. and it's our job to obviously see look who's kind of performing the best who you know where you're potentially going to get your your best returns who is is cash get down um who is going to charge you less fees and that's what yeah. that's what we're doing and obviously reiterating from maybe 2008 where people got burned in pensions it's, look it's a separate long thing but showing how the likes of pensions or savings and investments work they always mm -hmm. always work and they always always return um, yeah. And I mean that the, the normal stuff. Somebody going, well, geez, you know, I put mine into two hour racing and it failed. Well, look, listen, that was that was a really silly choice. Or yeah. I put everything into property. I, I just me generally, I just I don't like property, and I'll, I'll always say that. Um, and if someone wants to do it, hey, go ahead, absolutely. That that's mm -hmm. that's your thing. But I just don't like it. I just think it's a little. I try and remind people. You remember Aircom. Do you remember everyone in Ireland had their shares in that? Or yeah. in, um, what's the bank? The uh, Anglo Irish. Um, in Anglo Irish. So there's a load of oh, people that had shares in it. I know, look, forgetting about the, the, the whole politics that goes into that, but having it in just one company is just not a strategy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what we do. We, we kind of just go, here's a strategy. Here's, you know, life companies that show you. Um, different funds and things to go into um, it's the same thing every day but it's different every day that's what okay. I love most about the job you're still talking about whatever mortgages every single day but yeah. everyone's different Do you know like yeah. every person you meet is different and it does keep it very fresh interesting so cover more financial is a cover more yeah. financial am I saying that right okay yeah cover so more cover financial, financial yeah. is a is a life planning uh, service so you offer a range of products from life insurance um mortgage advisory mm. um and uh, investment advice things like that yeah and pension pension advice too so it's 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 an all immersive thing yeah so that's a that's that's very good um because i know you guys came to our church to do um an event where we were just talking yeah, about yeah. Uh, mortgages and property and stuff like that so that's the that's kind of like the topic i wanted to talk about today but the fact that you do life insurance in, there was like so many chairs and i was like oh my god this is like a concert <laughs> i was like oh i don't really get too nervous um you know but i was like oh my god there's gonna be like 150 200 people here what are we going to do yeah <laughs> but it was such amazing people that we'd such um as you know, once we got going, we were like, we're hard to leave. We wouldn't leave. We're like that guest yeah, that just yeah. won't go home. We're just there drinking no, tea. No, I thought eating. it was great. Who made the cookies? I couldn't tell you, but I ate like 10 of them that day. They were <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I ate about 10 of them. <laughs> Back for the cookies. Yeah. So we were talking about mortgages that day anyway. And, you know, I think everybody that was there found that extremely beneficial and helpful. And I think now, after me and my wife were there, we we now realise that we won't buy a house without the help of a, without a mortgage advisor. So we'll definitely be going to yourselves um, for all of that when we start, because it was just so helpful. And it's the fact that you do the, what's in the best interest of the person that's getting the house, because it's not us that pays you; it's the bank. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's so it's in our best interest and it's in your best interest to get us the best deal possible you know so Absolutely. Look, i'm always going to flog to a degree yeah. that you have to talk to an advisor a broker yeah. rather than going straight to the bank um, and you know Absolutely. and we always kind of say um oh we're sure we can bring you to every bank um, mm. and we can you know realistically but once uh, once the meeting is going on and we're kind of chatting away 
like what's going through my head is oh yeah that we're going to go to AIB or, or someone might do shift work or something I kind of go oh actually maybe Bank of Ireland might be better for that or you know mm-hmm. maybe PTSB or Finance Ireland or ICS and that's all going around in my head it's going to go yeah, to different, yeah. a different level and I'm not into I'm not into saying this person is bad or that person is bad or you shouldn't be going with them um, because I believe there's plenty of business out there for even all the advisors and all the banks. But it's a big mm-hmm. thing, advisors, they just love to go out and kind of go, on, oh, no, he doesn't know what he's on about or I wouldn't trust that fella or it's ridiculous. But with with the banks, I definitely find, to be honest, there's been poor advice. We have had people mm-hmm. come directly from the bank and go, we never told that. We were never told that. We were never told that. Yeah. Um, and I just, I don't know if it is because maybe the salary is guaranteed or they're going to get paid at the end of the week or month. Whereas mm-hmm. with us, um, and it's the same with every broker, to be fair, or majority, is that we don't get paid until you get the mortgage. Yeah. So if we meet you, these, this can take, I've met people, we've had a chat, they've had six months to prepare for the mortgage. And then it was about four months after that. Yeah, because the home they went for was in probate, mm-hmm. so that's ten months. Like we had to wait yeah. ten months to get paid, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. effectively. You know, and and that's where it kind of go to people. If you think we're in it just for the money, or yeah. you know, we're trying to flog people, you do a yeah. job for ten months where you're well, not seeing any paid. income. How difficult that is to to build up that deposit, and I mean, I think yeah. everyone in the street know knows that, but it's proven the ability to repay that mortgage and clearly mm-hmm. showing that. And you kind of get this, and, and they're right, you can have all your money in a current account, but it's really difficult for the bank to see what you've been saving every month. Whereas if you just move it into a savings account, just an online, mm-hmm. just set it up on the phone a couple of minutes, and you're transferring over the same amount every month, mm-hmm. it's just really simple for the bank and the underwriter to go, Okay, I see Tunji saving a thousand a month or fifteen hundred or two grand or whatever, and then you just move on 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 to the next thing. And yeah. that um, another big thing is when you're buying a house, the stamp duty and the solicitor's fees. A mm-hmm. lot of people nearly half forget that. So when you're looking at it and and, and the bank and you go right, that house over there is is three hundred thousand, and you're going right, you have to add on three grand you know for the stamp duty so you're looking at three hundred and three thousand. let's mm-hmm. just call it look three grand for for simple maths for a solicitor for all their fees that that are involved there's the three hundred and six thousand that somebody mm-hmm. wasn't factoring in you know you're getting two hundred and seventy thousand. you know 90 percent, and you're mm-hmm. like right there's there's 30 36 000 there people go but mm-hmm. i only saved 30. Yeah. And you're just going to go, yeah, you're forgetting that the bank wants to see that you have the solicitor fees and, and the stamp duty money there mm. as well. Um, okay, that's interesting. That, that's, I didn't know that. That's a big one. It happens a lot. It's delayed a lot of mortgages where people haven't really factored that in, that extra, mm. you know, whatever. It could be up to six, seven thousand, which is a hell of a lot of money. Yeah. Interesting. Right, so stamp duties and solicitor fees. I didn't even know about that. I just learned that now. So that's something that you need to you add so to your you deposit. In the church. I was, but I'm, I'm just using <laughs> yeah, this one here. It it's um, yeah. it, and look, that's one of the big. It, it's a big thing we see every day. Or I didn't know that I need. And they're going, we need to show six months. So meeting an advisor, or look, even the bank, whatever suits somebody. But getting to somebody as soon as possible um is, is is definitely the key to it and someone that's going to show you step by step and simply what you need to do you know whether that's writing it down or an email by going here's what you need to do or here's what you need to show and i don't mean just the documentation that's yeah. required for the bank i mean by actually physically going okay set up a savings account if you haven't got that done and we'll we'll do it across and you know we'll we'll set it up and explaining why the bank wants to see this you know what yeah. their view thought it is and look we mightn't agree or or we might not like it and, and that's okay but that's who we have to satisfy and here's mm-hmm. their 
rationale or thinking behind why we need to do x sometimes that does i find helps people when they go all right i don't agree with what they're saying but i understand why they're asking for for that okay right and in terms of um i know there was one thing that you said at the the event is to get an approval letter before you even get your deposit if you can show that you can afford it so you can use your rent that you're paying as a way to show yeah. that you can afford the mortgage could you go into that a little bit further um sorry now the, the line just went a bit bad there so you were saying that to show the affordability to repay the mortgage using rent yeah 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 well i mean that is so like a lot of people another big misconception and I, I'm going to pick up look the potential mortgage is two thousand a month, right? Mm -hmm. And you're paying fifteen hundred a month in rent. You yep. need another five hundred euros to show you can afford that two thousand. And we generally yep. try and get people to do a little bit more. Again, it just gives confidence in the bank, or which is big now with interest rates rising. Yep. So lenders, definitely Bank of Ireland, will assess you on. The amount of mortgage is going to be. Mm -hmm. We go with that two grand. But what now they're looking at is well, what if interest rates did rise by two percent, which we have seen? Um, mm -hmm. Would would Tunji be able to afford that if that increased by four hundred quid? And that's what we're mm -hmm. trying to show people now is if if we can do that, let's save that and let's make the case kind of bulletproof. Um, okay. So just going back, so you're talking to two grand, you're saving fifteen hundred. Or sorry, you're, you're renting for 1500 It's that 500 you need to show. But some mm -hmm. people think that, well, I have a car loan, and that's 300 I go, no, mm -hmm. they don't take the car loan. They don't yeah. take a personal loan. They don't take any other loan as ability to repay. Yeah. And so the reason rent. being, rent and savings, yeah. So the, mm -hmm. the only, the reason why they don't take a car loan or, or maybe a personal loan is sometimes people take a personal loan for a holiday, and that's looked at. Mm -hmm. That's what someone wants to do, that's fine. But you're going to go on another holiday. You're probably going to need that loan again. The same yeah. with the car. The car is going to need to be upgraded or changed at some stage. And that's their viewpoint, is that that 25, 30 grand or whatever you borrowed, even 10 for, for the car, you're going to mm. need to change that car again. You're going to need, well, I suppose it's gone different now. Secondhand cars are, are, are going for nearly more money than brand new. Um, and <laughs> but generally, like the the this the, the you know the decrease by uh, you know whatever amount of thousands, and that's where the bank is going. But you're going to need that gap, and they're probably going to have to borrow for that. So that's yeah. why they don't take on loans as a proven ability to repay the loan. Right, and in terms of um, so if we were to go up based off percentages, so how much percentage would the bank want to see? Um, in terms of like your incoings and then your outgoings, if you were applying for a mortgage, would they like to see that your, um, let's just say a potential mortgage would be like 40% of your incomings each month or like, did it go based off percentages like that or is it case by case? It, well, it is case by case, but there's the, the biggest figure is the proven ability to, to repay the loan. Um, and that's the one. So when we use the calculator and we, we put in, you know, how much you're looking to borrow all that kind of stuff there is a percentage down the end and you're looking at sometimes you can see 140 150 and that's because just kind of put figures on it you're kind of saying if the mortgage is 2000 and your rent is 2000 yeah you're at 100 percent, and yep. then maybe you put in a bit of savings whatever mm -hmm. four or five hundred quid now you're talking you're up to what 140 150 percent proven ability okay. To repay the loan and there's right. also then there's another figure there which is uh again it kind of shows the debt service ratio mm -hmm. and that's a percentage so we want to see that low um which is it's based on your income the cost of living when we take out the repayment of what you're paying plus any loans maintenance costs whatever else what is yeah. your debt service ratio and they like to see anywhere in the 30s is fine and quite standard um right. It's like it is their calculator. They factor in the cost of living off your wages. So there's no, mm -hmm. did, I wouldn't say it really goes into it that deep to a degree. The calculator okay. does that, uh, the great mm -hmm. spreadsheet. Um, mm -hmm. They don't physically look down and go, well, this month now you, you kind of spent 60% or 70% of your income 
on mm-hmm. socializing. But right. big ticket uh, transfers is another one, like a thousand euros here or seven, eight hundred here or there. They may ask, well, what was that about? Yeah. And it's just to make sure that you don't, you're not given a loan or, you know, um, yeah, basically a loan to a friend or you haven't got maintenance costs or, or something like that. Um, and reoccurring transfers. So if you're transferring out 100 quid every week, they're kind of going, we want to know what that is. That looks like yeah. a financial commitment. What mm-hmm. what What is that? Um, okay. But like, I mean, if you went into... I always say pennies is always the funny one. And you go in, you kind of tap 20 times in a day. They don't really care. Lenders don't yeah. actually read. That means nothing. Um, the other one then is the the gambling. Mm-hmm. There's a bit of a misconception. Now it's a bit of a myth. The lenders don't mind seeing that. It doesn't go, oh, I've won Paddy Power transaction yeah. on my account. They're going to, no, not at all. You could be putting 20, 30, 40, even up to 100 quid a week into Paddy Power. But it has to be relative to your salary. What they are okay. watching for, though, is you're doing the same amount every week, roughly. Yeah. That's a habit. Um, mm-hmm. That's, well, a habit. It's a, it's a pastime. You know, that's something you're doing. What's the difference between that and going bowling, to a degree? Yeah. I know it's gambling. Yeah. But if they're kind of going, no, he's sustained. So you do the same amount every week? That's okay. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's, yeah. um, that's a pastime for somebody. But if it kind of starts going, you know, 100 this week, 200 next week, and it's really up and down, you're kind of right. going, there is a concern there, you know, could could he be chasing losses? Is he, has the, as the gambling ads go, has the fun stopped in this, you know? Yeah. I think right. that's really what they're looking out for. Okay. And in terms of, um, oh, what was the question? In terms of what, um, Oh yeah. So in terms of um, let's just say if somebody gets a job, how long would somebody have to work? Like let's just say if they were to work three months and then they were given a permanent contract, would that mm. be accepted, or does it have to be the minimum six month period? It's, or no, it's a case by case. Like and I mean, uh, yeah. we, we've seen people go from one job and transfer to another and still be approved. Mm-hmm. So they've waived the um, the new employer has waived the. Um, I can't even think of the name of it. The probation period. Okay. Um, yeah. But like sometimes I don't like saying this, but you kind of go certain industries so like like an accountant. It might be someone, maybe like a chartered accountant, or that's kind of high up a tax advisor or something. And you're maybe yeah. going from a, a you know a delight to a PWC, mm-hmm. you know, or or, or or vice versa. They're kind of going, yeah. well, you know, that that's okay, you yeah. know, and they they will accept that um but generally they do like to see six months the biggest problem we have at the moment is it, the, IT in right. general so anyone working in linkedin amazon facebook um google any of those we need a letter from the employer stating that you know as far as the employer is concerned that yeah. their job is safe or they're not going to be let go okay. um, and that can cause a bit of a bit of issue do you know, like, mm-hmm. because how do you write a letter like that as a company? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, you're going to go and hold on. I got a letter off you last week saying I was safe. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, <laughs> and in two weeks, three weeks time, you're going to go and Sunday, you can pack your stuff, you know, you're out the door. Um, yeah. So you can see where that'd be very difficult, but that's our, at the moment, that's our biggest problem is dealing okay. with anyone from the likes of the LinkedIn's, the, the Google's, any of these guys, Amazon's, uh, really anything kind of internet it software yeah kind of area is um interesting they're definitely they're definitely under pressure okay right okay so i think i think we've gotten a, a good bit of information there about the mortgages and stuff like that i think yeah people would be people would be happy to hear that but now in terms of um like life insurance and stuff like that like what would what are some common misconceptions with life insurance that people should young people specifically like starting families and stuff like that should know because life insurance isn't something that's talked about in my community um yeah yeah barely hear people talking about it like it's not something that you know people people speak much about or in much detail in very very simple terms it's an insurance policy it's insurance something that may happen 
realistically, and you can throw out all these statistics, and I try to keep it very simple, the chances of, let's say, me and you dying in the next 10 years are very low. Yeah. You know, they just are. And mm-hmm. the cost of life insurance does reflect that. It, it, it's cheap mm-hmm. enough. Um, but in 10 years' time, it's going to be maybe double that price. Yeah. So what we're saying is exactly, now, yeah. look, and people go, I paid in all this money, but I get nothing back. That's how insurance, by definition, works. Mm-hmm. Simply, do you, do you know yeah. it's like the car insurance? We don't ask for money back at the end of the year when when we mm-hmm. don't claim or we don't get into an accident. Um, yeah. that, that, that's one of the biggest things we come across. Like life insurance, is life insurance. It's quite simple. You die and there's a payout. Um, yeah. you know, the, the really this another thing is, oh, the life company doesn't want to pay out. Um, I don't be worried about that at all. If you there's questions there, answer the questions honestly, and you'll be insured. Um, but the biggest thing, as, as you say, is I pay in all that money and I don't get anything back. Do you know, look, that, that's insurance by its, its very definition. It's yeah. insuring something in an event that may or may not happen. Right. And because uh, I spoke to a life insurance person not too long ago, and he like the younger you are basically the better it is because you you try and get like a i can't remember what the limits are can you get like a 50 60 year term or something like that or is it limited to like a 10 20 year no you can go as high as you like and i mean i think it's yeah. up to like 90 with some companies you kind of go right that's the we're cutting off at age 90. um yeah. but there's, there's a great thing as we call it what convertible option which mm. is we insure you now today and we put that policy in place for 20 years time or 15 years time. And in, in 15 years time, you have the option to continue on that policy. Yeah. But the big thing what people forget is in 15 years time, you may not need that amount of life cover that you originally needed. So yeah. you start out getting your life policy tomorrow because you have a young child, right? And mm-hmm. the child is two or three. Mm-hmm. And you go, right, I, well, what I'm selling is we're going to do this up to the child's 25. So give or yeah. take, you know, 20, 22 years. And we look at the figure and the figure comes out and we're like, whoa, that's, that's you know, that's expensive. And we go, okay, well, the amount that I've put down is basically replacing your income. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we, we kind of can't change that. So yeah. let's maybe look at reducing how long that life insurance policy will be mm. generally we go down to 15 years and you're kind of going yeah okay i can deal with that price that's okay and i can what i'm now putting next is right in 15 years time i'm just going to throw a number out there like, you don't need 400 000 euros of life cover your child is now 16 17 so yeah. you need this policy now for another seven eight years give or take mm. um but because you've lived you now don't need you know you need your your income for the next seven eight years yeah. and it's always easier say to people when you you know it, it's hard on a on a zoom call or something to explain it and people another big thing people don't get is i don't think it's explained is when you're sitting down with somebody and you go you need 400 grand worth of life cover mm. and somebody's like i can just honestly tell you somebody's sitting there going what is he talking about <laughs> Like I've two and a half grand coming in a month and your man is yeah. over there on the 400 grand. And if any advisor sees this, they're actually going to go, that's the way I'm going to do it. Um, yeah. but they don't get it. So you need yeah. to walk people through where we're coming up with these figures. Um, mm-hmm. Do you know what, and why we're coming up with this? Where that big number came from? And even like even myself dealing in this industry, like, oh, someone said it to a degree. 400 grand what the hell would i do with 400 grand in the morning do you know yeah. what <laughs> like, <"Whoa." laughs> uh, but it, it's just it's kind of sitting down explaining why we need that so like again in short the biggest misconceptions is i don't get anything back and i mm-hmm. always tell people i hope that's the worst money you ever spend is on that life yeah. policy because if i yeah. arrive on with a check or the life company posts out a check someone's dead yeah <laughs> oh, there's yeah oh Th- th- that's what happens if, if you're not getting paid out it means your life so if that's the worst money you spend over your life i'm i'm all right with that yeah 100 percent. right interesting and 
The last one would be the, uh, you said you do investment advice and stuff like that as well. Yeah. So who would be the ideal, like, what the, what would the typical person look like um, that, that comes looking for like investment advice? You know, like what would be the age range or whatever? Honestly, like ideal, you're generally talking to people kind of maybe later on into the 30s. But for me, if you're earning an income, no matter what yeah. that income is, you should be potentially looking at, you should be looking at financial planning as a whole. You may yeah. not have that amount or money to maybe do an investment. And people mm-hmm. think when you talk about investment, they think high rise buildings, they think, you know, property development. I'm talking about 75 to 100 quid a month going to a life company. Yeah. That is invested in, we just keep it kind of simple, in stocks and shares. There's a stat there, I think it's your man. I said, oh, McGee, he, he, he's kind of on the telly. He, I like it, he's kind of all right. Um, but, and I've, I've tried to search up this, and he's right. If you put in money today, in mm-hmm. five years' time, it's a 99.6% chance that that money is going to be worth more than when you put it in. Yeah, yeah. No, so tell me that doesn't work. The, the thing is, what I'd also add on to that is, if you put in 100 quid today, it could be worth 102 euros. It's like We're not talking it's going to be worth, you know, quadruple or loads or 10 times as much. But yeah. for investment advice in general, I kind of, the way I'm saying to people, pick an amount you're comfortable with for the next 12 months, whatever that may be, if it's 75 to 100 quid, um, we'll stick with that. We'll see how we get on. At the end of next year, we'll, we'll assess where we are. And we go, okay, you put in X, it's now worth Y. I didn't really notice that going out of the account. I think we could definitely do another 25, 40, 50 quid a month. Perfect, let's mm-hmm. do that. And what are the goals? I don't know. Everyone's different. Is it the world cruise? You're saving up for that, you know, to be like Tunji going off on a, on a, on a, a world holiday. Is it mm-hmm. the kids' communion confirmation? No, a big event. Is it an extension on the house? I don't know, yeah. but start coming up with some goals. Um, and we often find with, with people, it's happened to me once or twice, when I start kind of shouting out these goals and people go, I never thought of that. I want to build an extension. Whatever gets yeah. you going. You know, whatever. Yeah. Whatever kind of suits. But we do go through what we need. Again, we don't mm-hmm. kind of go, okay, let's put 100 quid in there. We do assess what have you got? What is the spend? And what we, like, I can't, I don't go through somebody's bank statement and go, why did you spend... 50 quid and pennies that's not what i do <laughs> but that's kind of what you'd like them to do do you know you'd yeah. like them to kind of go right what have we got we look at the high level stuff what's the outgoings in general for the house do you know we obviously have the mortgage or the rent or whatever the food the, all that kind of stuff and what have you got left after that a lot of people mm. are surprised when i turn around and go okay so what i'm seeing here is seven eight hundred quid sometimes more disposable income They're like we haven't got that i'm like i know nobody mm. does because we just don't know between the coffees, the, you know, I'm an awful man for getting caught in the two for ones or, or three for twos in the shop or, you know, in super value, two or three for six quid. And I'm like, after coming out with 12 different varieties of potatoes, they're, they're, they're great value. I had to get them. <laughs> so we all get caught in those things. And, but it is kind of going somewhere. I'm going to make room for that hundred quid. Mm-hmm. And we'll have that going out. Um, so investments isn't all about massive money. But as I said, kind of at start, the saving, I just don't like this pure rainy day fund. It doesn't excite anyone. It doesn't get anybody wanting to keep a few quid, you know? Yeah. Um, another thing that it does upset people, but I kind of go, people my age in the mid to late 30s, don't listen to your parents. They're yeah. literally one of the worst people to ever listen to. <laughs> Um, like they're, they're from the worst financial era I've ever seen, you know. Like, <laughs> set up a credit union account, you know, they're mad into this credit union, and yeah. Like, yeah okay, and it, love, it. that's cool, set it up, save for money. No, it's credit union's handy now if you need a loan, yeah. At eight nine percent repayment, yeah, yeah, like, you know, they're kind of going, That's what you're telling me to do to go and pay three four percent more than. Yeah what's out there Probably, that's like yeah, bonkers yeah. Is, is is brilliant um yeah. you know everyone can jump on and see right if i want a four or five grand loan for whatever i can see who i who i can go to um yeah. but, like 
the credit union charge you a lot for i don't mean to be kind of you know throwing water all over the credit union but i just mean our parents You're speaking the gender. truth it's the truth it is, <laughs> I'll never forget my own mother. The hardest sell, if you like, I ever had was to my own mother. Yeah. Um, I'll never forget it. She was coming to retirement, and I kind of went, how much have you got in the credit union? Um, yeah. It's not that exciting, but I'm not going to say the figure anyway. And she's yeah. like, yeah, I have this. And I'm kind of going, okay, what I want you to do is take that, put it into your pension, right? You're going to get 40% tax relief. The government now owes you 40%, or revenue owes you 40% of what you put in. And she's like, yeah. okay. And I was like, but you're going to take the benefit to your pension like in a week or two weeks' time. Yeah. So you're 40% up by simply just moving it into that account. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I, I don't know about that. I was like, oh, sweet Jesus. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, seriously. Uh, but you tell a complete stranger and they're like, <laughs> Like, where did you come up with this? And I kind of going, yeah, it's not. It's just, it's, it's just the rules. But I kind of going, whatever you have, move it into the pension there, and you're going to get it out next week. You know, if somebody's coming to that retirement age, and yeah. it'll be called in the industry like a bed and breakfast is what it's called. It's like yeah. in and in and out. And yeah, I absolute murder. So, man, if you're watching, it'd break my heart. Um, so yeah, it was like World War Three, uh, and then yeah. whoever looked after the company pension, she came back to me and she's like. The man that looks after that said you are right. <laughs> oh, I said, Do you know what? Do you know what? Deal with him. Just I, I can't I can't be dealing with you. Just go no. go deal with go deal with him. Um Yeah. yeah Everyone will so listen to you except, except except in your own hometown, huh? It is. Like except, if you, first. except the people closest to you. <laughs> That's a fact. I remember seeing something on, on the internet um a while back and it was funny. It was kind of more directed at someone setting up their own IT business or something. And yeah. the kind of long and short of it is, look, Beyonce brings out a perfume. I think it was JLS at the time. Whatever boy band is rocking around now brings out uh, a deodorant. Your mates will go out and buy it for whatever, their, their partners, their kids, whatever. But, you know, you set up as a financial advisor or as um, an IT consultant. That's a scam. Oh, yeah. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go with him. Yeah. And there is, it's an Irish thing to kind of go, I hate to give him money to see him do well. Yeah. And like, I don't oh, yeah, deal no, with very my friends either. And uh, funny yeah. enough, I find it easier to deal with strangers. Uh, oh, yeah. Much, much easier to deal with. Um, I've kind of got a lot better on it. You know, when I first started, you were a kitchen that every year, just waiting for someone to mention life cover or, or yeah, pensions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're, 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 you're going to go, oh, listen to me. Now it's like, look, ring me someday and we'll arrange we'll arrange a sit down or we'll arrange a conversation but yeah. you know we're here whatever we're having a drink we're having a bite to eat we're yeah. watching a match we're playing golf whatever let's just not go down that road yeah it's very 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 irish thing to do <laughs> when it's time Massive. to in invest grocery. in your friend it's like oh no <laughs> couldn't let him do well now because i'm not getting in you know but it's if they're not gaining it from it Mad though. That, that's like with us in the let's say IT or financial services. But when yeah. your mate is a, a carpenter or plumber, it's like oh, I get it's... him in to do that at cost price, you know. Straight away. And you're yeah. kind of going, like, you let him plumb your house and try not pay him to a degree or pay him a lot less, but you yeah. won't let me give you a financial advice. You're like, no way, no, not letting you, uh, no way. Um, but I think I think some of it, though, to be fair, and I think that's where for anyone starting out or maybe only getting into this industry, I'll be going, go, sometimes your friends don't want you to know what you're earning. And that's all right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if anyone does meet somebody and their mate has started out or is only getting going or whatever, say that to them. Just yeah. go, hey, we're mates, but I just don't want you. I don't want you that deep in my finances, if that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can go, cool. You know, and that's where someone can come back to you and go, hey, look, your man I met there told me to do X or told me to go with this company. And they kind of go and you can go, look, let me just let me just check one or two things or ask them this or that. And I'll make sure you're getting as good a deal as possible. Um, mm -hmm. And that's all right. I've no problem doing that. But just kind of, as I always say, just come up and say, hey, I'm just not overly comfortable with you knowing, you know, exactly what I spend my money on or my salary yeah. income. And, um, so it's gotta go just just tell someone. Yeah. Interesting.
Well, that was a very interesting episode. Was Believe it, it or not, I think I think, I think I think I think we've reached an hour. Have we? Wow. Almost an hour. Yeah. Time yeah, always flies when we're in here. Advisor, you know, once we start talking, we just don't stop. Yeah. No, I think that was uh, I think that was really good. Um, um a lot of yeah, no, it's gems you're just there. Kind of saying, well, I was kind of got glad. I was kind of going, how did you start out in this industry? It's like, oh my god, it was just mad, mad. Yeah. Um, Fine, and Let's it's kind go of a little. Go for yeah, that. look, I'll go over that. Actually, it's kind of, it's, there's a little bit of um, there's, there's a little bit of a moment in time in in, in that kind of setup actually. So Let's hear it. It's, it's, it's a bit of a long story. So it was back after the crash in two thousand eight, and I took this job with a. I don't know if I can name the company. That's it's, it's no problems with them. Uh, but it's a small tax consultancy firm called Lake. Um, I didn't even know. I didn't even know what he did. And even when, mm. I, when I got the job, I wasn't even 100% sure. But it was to do with research and development tax. Basically, we, we help people get their tax back from uh, revenue yeah. um, any, for any research and development that the company done. Um, and I literally just, it was like um, tele sales. So basically setting up appointments for the business development team. But I'll never forget my first manager. Uh, geez, I owe him a lot. I give him a plug, Andrew O'Reilly. Uh, he's actually a very good musician. Um, but yeah, he interviewed me. I'll never forget coming out of the interview. And I always find interviews easy. I was kind of going, wow, that fella now. He caught me with, with, with something there. And they're going, I'd give you the job, but I don't know where you're going in life. There's something to that effect. Like, you know, if you got a degree in business or something, I'd be about you, you yeah. know? And I kind of half yeah. was, I appreciate that. And half me was like, who the is this guy? Do you know, it, ask it, me about it, it. to make phone calls. Um, but Andrew was really, really good to me and taught me. I learned a lot from him. So we were we were there. We were the upstart. We were causing a lot of trouble in the industry. Um, good stuff, no, not bad stuff. But really, we had a team of accountants and tax um, professionals while we also had guys from industry-based, like engineers, who would assess the, the research development. We were bought over by um, Deloitte. Right. Obviously, the, the tax firm, and that was a that was a different learning curve. Um, Interesting. Just ultra professional, um, really good. Worked with some of the, I mean, some of the greatest minds in in the country, in my mind. Um, yeah. And again, a, another guy there was David Shannon. He's a he's a partner in tax. How that man didn't kill me, I don't know. Um, I had his head wrecked when when we moved over, like a million questions a day. Uh, I, I think he's going to retire early because of me. Um, but he's a young guy, actually. What he was, he was brilliant again. Uh, I learned a lot from my definitely own uh, a massive thanks, you know. Um, but after that, then, there was a chance meeting with the next colleague. I was at a crossroad. I was at that place where I didn't know where I was going. Like, and I mean, you're, you're in delight. You're surrounded by high achievers, like in school. Uh, high mm -hmm. achievers in their field and what they're at now and he kind of felt oh god the walls are closing in a bit here mm -hmm. what am i going to do what what, what, what am i actually doing here uh, i used to yeah, be a little yeah. bit embarrassed sometimes when people go where do you work i'll work in delight and people are like wow that's you know, a big firm i go yeah, yeah. You know, i'm kind of bluffing it a bit here um yeah. so it was a chance meeting with an ex-colleague and um, that's where i started out playing as a financial advisor it was really hard and um, really really tough road it was there was really hard times um mm. at the start but uh i'm glad where i ended up now you know i love the job so there was really two people now had massive influence over me um andrew really pushed me in the early days you know and mm. um, definitely someone that, that that pushed me hard and one of his uh things was you know what have you done for me lately yeah. in a nice way uh, not to make it sound horrible, but in a nice way, and it kind of it was a nice round. Oh, I had a good month. I got I got us good meetings with good companies, or I won some business, or whatever. And he kind of goes, "Yeah, what happened last month? What are you going to yeah. do this month?" And it, yeah. uh, that followed me for for quite a while. Um, yeah. It's followed me quite a while now. That you know, you have a good month or a good business, or whatever, and you just you just kind of keep going. And mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was like that. That was a that was the shift. Um, at that stage that was a big right. shift, shift in the career and it was definitely it was one of the times when i felt most under pressure 
was in the light. And that's nothing to do with the company now. I don't mean to, to say anything like that, but I did feel I didn't know where I was going, what I was mm. going to do. It was the first time I kind of panicked about where is where is my direction? Where am I mm. going here? Um, and it's intimidating to be surrounded by such intelligent people. Yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe I'm understating it a bit, but such professionals, such people are yeah. so good. Um, our tax partner at the time, uh, Declan, I'll never forget, I walked into his office. and I mean, he was doing six things at once. Mm. Uh, I mean, I'll never ever forget it. He was, he had a laptop here and he was sending emails or something. He was on a conference call, which was muted from his end. And he had an yeah. iPad and a phone. And he had all things going. I walked into his office and he said, just, just wait one second. I was like, yeah, cool. And he unmuted the conference call and said whatever he said. I can't even remember. And he just muted it again. So he obviously gave some high level of uh, tax knowledge. <laughs> and I was just standing there looking at him kind of going. And he's like, yeah. I was like, what's wrong with you? You're a wizard or something. <laughs> what are you after doing? He's kind of laughing at me. Kind of going, Get out of my office. Um, but like, you know, when you're surrounded with uh, this Declan Butler, when you're surrounded with people like that, mm. you're kind of going, whoa, these are mm. on another level of of operating. Mm. Um, and that's where I kind of felt, wow, where where do I where do I go from here? What am I going to do? Took a massive gamble. And definitely after we moved, or I moved into the financial services, a different end of it in the, in the personal space, I was like, for a good year, it was like, what the hell am I doing here? Mm -hmm. and, you know, what the hell am I doing here? This is mad. Um, Crazy. Yeah, that's, that, was the, that was the start of it, yeah. Right. And how did you meet Nigel? How did I meet Nigel? Funny. Um, me and Nigel are not, grew up not far from each other. Right. And his brother who works with us was a year ahead of me in school. So mm. we know a lot of the same people. But um, it was after, it was after, I think the second, or was it the first lockdown, one of the lockdowns. And again, kind of had another bit of a crossroads. And a girl from Aviva said, you should meet Nigel. And I yeah. met him, and yeah, it's her fault. <laughs> from, from, from there, yeah, that's how, um, a really, a really, really good guy, though. I mean, amazing guy to work for, I have to say. Yeah, and a great, a great, uh, you probably saw it, I suppose, at the, when we were there. Yeah. Um, really, really good guy to, to work for, and a great place to work. It's really, mm. it's fun. You know, like, I mean, it's one of those places where if you're wearing something, you know, I could go in in jeans and, and a T-shirt or a shirt and it's kind of smart casual, you know, it's it's mm. respectful. You could be torn apart for wearing the wrong shirt. Yeah, yeah. You know, you That's could what you want. On. And it is. It, it, that is what you want. It's a great place. Or I know I went in one day and I had no, um, no hair stuff in my hair. It's like really fuzzy. And yeah. they just literally all burst out laughing at me. And I was like, <laughs> I'm going home. I like I come in for like a quick half an hour, an hour just to grab some stuff. And they were like, The state of your hair, what is up with you? <laughs> and it's uh, that's it's, Ireland. It's really, Love it. Yeah, it's a it's a cool place though. It's really it's really like I've worked in places where I mean and funny, none of the two places I mentioned where I mean you you'd want to wear a stab proof vest. Yeah. You know. I mean, people are trying to stab you in the back at every turn. And here, we're like in Covermore Financial, it's just really, it's really, really good place to work. Everyone is there to do a job. Everyone's really helpful if you need a hand with anything. And it's just, it's a good humored place. Mm. You, I find it very hard to have a bad day in there where, you know, someone doesn't kind of pick you up or doesn't make a a joke at your expense or someone else's expense in a nice way yeah. Um, yeah. and it's a really really cool place to be that's great so unfortunately he's not getting rid of me for a long long time <laughs> yeah yeah that's good it's good to know right so 
Do you, where can people um, reach out to yourself or uh, if they want any more information about mortgages, life uh, life insurance or um, investment? What would be yeah, the contact look, that people reach out to? Look, go on to the website. You get the office number there. Um, get the mobile number and we just make an appointment. You know, very simply reach out and cover more.ie and um, all the contact details are there and the mobile number just get in touch directly make an appointment you know or request a call as we do with a lot of mortgages is we would have a phone call generally first just to explain how the process works what they need and it gives me the opportunity to find out is this or isn't this going to work i don't want to drag someone out of a, a day off work or take an evening of their time to go after five minutes this isn't going to work you're six months away um, yeah. and and it deflates them so we have a chat and it also gives them an opportunity to go um, i like or don't like this guy mm. you know I, I you've got to be honest with that as well they're going to go that gives them the opportunity that if they think you know i'm happy for him to help me get my mortgage or get me my my first or second or whatever the situation is and that's mm. what i like about the, the initial phone call and again we can do it now with teams and um this app we just set up that i've already forgotten and um, you know there's loads of ways to do it but yeah just get in touch directly there's no it's not hard to get me you know there's no secretaries or there's no real issues in those find the best time to get me is when i'm in the car and i'm traveling yeah. to work or traveling somewhere and I've, i'm never too far away from the phone so like i said anyone maybe unsure about a meeting or they kind of go a lot of people go, i send an email to see if that's what suits whatever way but hopefully they'll find them very easy going um and i won't put them under too much pressure to to do anything or, or make them feel any way awkward so just reach out get in touch that's perfect right so i'll put all of the details for yourself i'll put your phone num number and email um in the yeah, description mobile, and, I'll, yeah, and i'll put the cover more website if they want to check the website out as well so thank yeah, you everybody good. for listening thanks guys Dungy, thanks so much for having me on i really appreciate it and uh no, enjoy the rest of the holidays i'm so jealous i most certainly will <laughs> i'll send you a couple of photos don't <laughs> <laughs>